police officers in Marietta, Georgia have implemented an unconventional method of training that has led to a reduction in injuries to both officers and suspects that resist arrests. As featured on HBO's Real Sports, Marietta's police department has begun training and using Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The department issued a mandate for all new hires to train with a local Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym, learning to use the technique instead of using firearms or other weapons. The program was so popular and successful in the reduction of injuries that the training was open to all members of the department. While the vast majority of police training involves gun safety and marksmanship in most jurisdictions, this is zero requirement for hand. There is zero requirement for hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Many martial arts and policing experts believe if officers trained in guns and tasers for holes and locks, traded guns for holes and locks, that interactions with communities would be much more productive. But is Marietta's officer's use of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu a solution to curb police violence, or is it just the latest fad in policing? Joining us to discuss is correspondent for HBO's Real Sports, which is streaming on HBO Max, David Scott. David, this is such a fascinating story. Give us a little background on how this Brazilian <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu came to be used as a, a, a tool for American law enforcement. Yeah, you know this goes back several years. Um, uh, the, the 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 main character in our story, Henry Gracie, and his and his brother Hirian have been have been doing this sort of quietly for for literally the last like, close to twenty years, um, and um, and and very slowly a number of departments, a couple hundred really have uh, have have you know gotten on board and and started experimenting with this but it wasn't until marietta georgia actually committed to doing a, a proper pilot study that uh, that we that we actually have some empirical evidence that um that that something like brazilian jiu-jitsu can one close or help close the training gap in american law enforcement um, but also but also shift not just the skill set but the mindset towards uh, an, an ethic where where they use the minimal effective dose of force, and and it's a concept that's kind of built into this particular martial arts discipline. It'll be interesting to see if it can be replicated in other departments and uh, and scaled up. One of the things that police officers often say when uh, you know in defending use of weapons is that it provides distance, right? So this will require a close contact, a bodily contact. They always say, you know, anything can go wrong. They can do something. If I get too close, I have to stand back. I may have to fire my uh, your firearm to keep myself safe. Uh, how, how does this program counter that argument? Well, um, you know, the reality is that uh, is that the overwhelming majority of police officers go their whole career without firing their weapon, um, let alone let alone firing it at somebody. Um, um, however, almost all officers actually have to put their hands on a citizen at some point. Um, and that's why this the training gap is, is so egregious. Um, officers get the overwhelming majority of their training in, in firearms and, and the very thing that they are least likely to encounter on the job. Uh, and uh, and vanishingly, vanishingly little training in the thing that they are most likely to, to do on the job. So the, the idea that you can just keep your distance in police, in, in, in policing and, and patrolling in, in contemporary America is is, uh, is actually is actually all wrong, um, and uh, and and the most common kind of encounter between police officers and citizens is the non-lethal physical confrontation, um, and uh, and that's precisely the the category of uh, of encounter that uh, that uh, BJJ is uh, is, uh, is taking aim at, no pun intended. So if Marietta is doing a pilot for this program. Is it spreading or are other departments adopting it? Yeah, well, there, there are, by, by our count, there, there are about, about 400 that have, um, 400 of the 18,000 police departments in the country that have, um, that have signed up for, for some level of training with the, with the, with the Gracie group. 
Um, there are other departments like Marietta that have uh, that have availed themselves of, of local Brazilian jiu-jitsu gyms to to sort of plug their 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 depart their forces into into um, into into training. Um, but it's still very much under the under the radar. Um, uh, you know the, the the constraints to scaling up anything in 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 modern policing in this country are 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 many, and in some cases they are they are you know, almost insurmountable. Um, there are unions, um, all kinds of rules around compensation for for officers' time. Training goes through that filter too. Um, um, you know, there are places in America where where uh, where where unions would require officers to be compensated for every hour of training that they do. Um, you mentioned in the lead in a, a state like Georgia requires zero hours of, of training in hand to hand combat, um, even though, you know, officers have to requalify, recertify um, with uh, with their handguns every uh, every, twice a year. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the big question is, uh, I think now that there's some nascent evidence that uh, that this can help, and nobody's saying it's going to be the panacea for all that's wrong in, in, in contemporary mm -hmm. policing. Um, but uh, but to the extent right. that it can, it can close that training gap, um, it might be able to move the needle. And now we have some some statistical evidence um, to uh, to to think that's true. So there's a, a police reform bill working its way through Congress. We still have not seen the wording of that bill, which means it probably has not been written in any form, real form yet. From right. what you have witnessed in the reporting of this story, do you believe that part of that police reform should be putting aside federal dollars to pay for the training for non-lethal hand-to-hand -hand combat training of some sort, whether Brazilian jiu-jitsu or some other sort, in that bill? Well, I, I think that um, you know certainly, certainly the the debate over this legislation should touch on the question of uh, of, of of training, but also standards. There are no federal standards for American law enforcement agencies in this country, um, and so so you know Georgia has 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 you know zero hours requirement for hand to hand combat. California requires four hours every two years. Um, you know, the other 48 states are, are all over the map with this stuff. So, you know, so one thing that, that, that a lot of people think could actually help is if the federal government got involved in standardizing some aspects of police policy, including training. And uh, so far that, uh, that, that does not exist. And, and this legislation might actually address that gap. David Scott, thank you for your time. Fascinating story. Really appreciate it. Black news is on the rise all across America. That story is next. You're watching Prime on BNC.